So in chapter 5, we begin discussing conditions and loops. Chapter 5 is going to focus on Boolean expressions, the if statement, comparing data, and while loops. Before I begin the lecture slides, I do want to take some time and do some programming examples. These programming examples are going to focus on Boolean expressions and the if statement. A Boolean expression is an expression that evaluates to a Boolean value. That Boolean value is either true or false, and we can use that expression to make decisions in our program. The Boolean expression is going to use relational operators, equality operators, and logical operators. So I set up a program example to demonstrate Boolean expressions. Now, when I said Boolean expressions use equality and relational operators, these are the operators right here that I'm talking about. We'll discuss them more in the lecture, but we have an operator for equality, for non-equality, for less than, for greater than, for less than equal to, for greater than equal to. And then we also have logical operators. We have the logical not which is basically taking an expression and reversing it. So if the expression was true, then it would make it false. If it was false, it would make it true. And then we have the and. So the and joins two expressions, and so does the or. But if you're using an and, then both expressions have to be true. And if you're using the or, then either one of the expressions have to be true. And this is the code that I have so far. I haven't done much. But what I'm going to do is prompt the user for numbers, and then I'm going to use those numbers that the user entered, and then we can set up some expressions and do an if statement. So here's the example I've written. I haven't actually finished this example, but I went ahead and set up some Boolean values. Now I'll put some comments on what these Boolean values are going to hold. So the first one is going to hold whether or not the number is even. The next one is going to hold whether or not the number is positive. The next one is going to hold whether or not the number is large and a factor of 5. So I'm considering a large number to be greater than 100. And the next one's going to hold if the number is 0. I'm prompting the user to enter a number, and I'm storing his value into num1. I declared num1 up here as an integer, and then I'm printing out the number back to the user. I did comment out my print statements because these values have not been initialized, because what I plan to do is come in right here and evaluate some expressions. But before I begin, I'm going to go ahead and compile and run this program. I'll enter a number, and there's my result. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this to print, because I really don't like to have the input to be below the prompt. Now the first expression I'm going to do is determine whether the number is even. So here's my Boolean value. I'm going to assign it to a Boolean expression. That Boolean expression is going to determine whether or not the number is even. The way we can do this is with the remainder operator. So what I'm doing is I'm saying the number is even if I can divide the number by 2 and have no remainder. So I'm using my remainder operator. So this is going to divide my number by 2 and give me the remainder. And if whatever I get from that division is equal to 0, then I know that the number is even. So this is the equality operator. Do not get that confused with our assignment operator. The assignment operator is right here. That's where we assign a value to variable, but we also have an equality operator, which is gonna check for equality. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment this line here, line 37, and we'll go ahead and compile and run this program and just look at our results. So I'm gonna start off by entering in an odd number. So I'm gonna enter in five. Is your number even? And the result of that is false. I'm gonna go ahead and run this again. This time I'm entering an even number, enter in 102 and that number is determined to be even. So the next expression I set up is determining if num1 is positive. So I'm using the relational operator greater than. So I'm saying if num1 is greater than 0 then I'm going to consider it to be positive because any number that's greater than 0 is considered to be positive. Any number that's less than 0 is considered to be negative and 0 is neither positive or negative. So now that I have this expression set up I'm going to go ahead and uncomment line 39 and compile and run my program. When I enter a negative 2, I get the number being positive as false. When I enter in a 9, I get the number being even as false and the number being positive as true. When I enter in 10, I get that the number is even and the number is positive. So I set up my next expression. This one's a little long. This is the one where I'm determining if the number is large and a factor of 5. I'm considering large to be greater than 100. So the first check I do is if the number is greater than 100. If this is true, then I need to check to see if the number is divisible by 5. So a number being divisible by 5 would mean that I would take my remainder operator, divide my num1 by 5, and if the result is 0, then that number is divisible by 5. So both of these conditions have to be true. This condition has to be true, and this condition has to be true in order for this to be true. And I'm doing this using my logical AND operator. AND is putting in the requirement that both sides of this AND operator have to evaluate to true. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment line 41 and 42 and compile and run my program. So I'm going to start off by entering a negative number, let's say negative 900. Negative 900 is even, it's not a positive number, and it's not a large number and a factor of 5. So I tested 95. 95 is not even, 95 is a positive number, but 95 is not a large number and a factor of 5. So both of these have to be true in order for this whole expression to be true. This time I entered in 100. 
100 is even, 100 is positive, but 100 is not a large number and a factor of 5. And the reason why this became false is because if you look at my expression, I said that num1 had to be greater than 100. So this time I tested 104. So 104 is even, it's positive. Even though it's greater than 100, it's still not a factor of 5. So this is false. This time I entered in 500. 500 is even, 500 is positive, and 500 is a large number that is divisible by 5. So this was true for 500. So the last check I have to do, so the last check I had to do was check to see if the number was 0. This is just a simple equality check. So I just take my num1 and check to see if it's equal to 0. This is going to store the Boolean result of this expression. And I'm going to go ahead and output that value. I'm going to go ahead and compile and run this program. So I entered in 1000. Everything was true except for the last one, which is, is your number 0? This time I'm going to go ahead and enter a 0. And you can see that my check to see if the number is 0 is true. So these are Boolean expressions. I can store the result of a Boolean expression into a Boolean variable, or I can use it in the conditional clause for a loop or for a conditional statement. It does make it a little easier to read if you use parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses here. So I added parentheses, and all of this just made it a little easier to read. It kind of separates the Boolean expression from the actual variable. So on this side is my variable in the equality operator, and on this side is my expression. So in the parentheses is my expression. I have an expression here. On the right side of this equality operator, I have two expressions. I have this expression and this expression. They're using a logical and to be joined together. And then I have my expression right here. So that's how you can use Boolean expressions. So let me show you how to use Boolean expressions inside an if statement. So here's a program I created to demonstrate the if statement. I have my scanner class. I plan to prompt the user for a value, a number again, and store that value into the num variable, which is an integer. This time I'm not going to use Boolean variables to capture the result of Boolean expressions. I'm going to use my Boolean expressions directly into my if statements. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my first if statement. So the syntax for this is you use the if, then you have parentheses of where your Boolean expression is going to go. And it's always good programming practice to open and close with the curly brace. So you don't need to use curly braces if you're only going to have one programming statement inside of your if, but it's always good programming practice to use it just in case you want to go back and add more than one statement. So inside of my parentheses is where my Boolean expression is going to go. So I'm going to check to see if the number is even. So here's my Boolean expression. It's the same that I used in my previous example, where I take num1 and I divide it by 2. And if that is equal to 0, then I know that this number is divisible by 2. And then I have an output statement where I'm saying that the number is even. I'm going to go ahead and compile and run this program. So when I enter in an even number, I should see my message. But when I enter an odd number, this is what happens. There's no output. If you look back at the program, we're saying if the number is even, go ahead and print out this statement. But if the number is odd, this statement is going to be skipped and there's no statements after the if statement. So I could come down here and just make a statement that the program has ended. But this statement is not in any if condition. So this statement is going to get displayed whether the number is even or not. I'm going to go ahead and compile over this program. So I enter in an even number. There's my output. I enter an odd number and there's my output. So on the if statement, we can add an else clause. The else clause would occur if the if statement condition is not true. So if this Boolean expression evaluates to false, then this statement will not be executed. But if I add an else clause, then the statement in the else clause will be executed. So I went ahead and added the else clause. So in my else clause, I'm simply just saying that the number is odd. I'm going to go ahead and compile and run that program. I'm going to enter in an even number. There's my output. Now I'm going to enter in an odd number. I now have output if the number is odd. All right, so I want to go ahead and add another if statement here. The if statement I want to do is determining if the number is positive, negative, or zero. There's three conditions to that. You're either positive, you're either negative, or you're zero, which is like in the middle of being positive and negative. So my first condition I'm going to do is check to see if the number is greater than zero. So here's my condition. I'm checking to see if number one is greater than zero, and then I'm outputting a statement. The number is positive. Now, if I were to come in here and put an else statement, then the else would be if the number is not greater than zero. So a number that's not greater than zero doesn't necessarily mean that it's negative because it could still be zero and zero is not considered to be negative. So I have to add another condition. I set up an else if. So I can add a second condition to this. So I basically check this condition. If that condition is false, then I'm going to check this condition. Now the condition I want to check is to see if the number is less than zero. So if the number is less than zero, I'm saying the number is negative. Now if neither of these conditions are true, then that only leaves one result. The number is zero. So if the number is not greater than zero, or the number is not less than zero, then the number is zero. So this is how we set up two condition checks. We can set up more. We can keep adding else ifs. We can add like another one. We can keep going with this. This whole thing here 
is considered one if statement. So when the code comes in here, only one statement is going to be ran, either the first one, the second one, or the last one. I'm going to go ahead and compile and run this program. So I'm going to enter in a negative number, and there is my result. I'm going to enter in a positive number, and there is my result. I'm going to enter in zero, and there is my result. So the last condition I wanted to check is determine if the number is a large number and divisible by five. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. So here's my Boolean expression I set up to determine if a number is greater than 100 and divisible by five. It's just like what I did before where I'm using the logical and. So I'm checking to see if the number is greater than 100 and that the number is divisible by five. Now I'm not using curly braces here because I wanted to demonstrate an error to you. Now I'm not using curly braces here because I want to demonstrate what would happen here. Now you don't need curly braces on your if statements. I recommend to always use them. But whenever you don't use a curly brace, that means only one line after the if statement. But whenever you don't use curly braces, that means only one line after the if is going to be printed out. So only this line is going to be printed out when this condition is true. This line right here is essentially going to be executed all the time, just like this statement is. I indented it because I wanted it to be part of my if statement, but really Java is going to see it like this. So if you're going to have multiple statements attached to your if, you're going to need to use the curly braces. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and run this program, and let's look at the results. So I'm going to enter a large number divisible by 5, and you can see that I'm getting the output. Your number is large, and your number is divisible by 5. I'm thinking that my program works, but when I run this again, an entry value that isn't considered to be large, I put a 5. This number is not large, but I got this output, and your number is divisible by 5. I'm still thinking it's working because I entered a number that is divisible by 5. But I'm going to go ahead and run this again. I'll put in a 3 this time, and I'm still getting this output. And that's because even though it looks like this statement is attached to this condition, since I didn't use curly braces, this statement is actually going to be executed all the time. So if I wanted to be attached to the condition, I need to use curly braces, just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and compile this program. I'm going to enter a large number. There's my output. I'm going to enter in a small number. And those two statements didn't get printed out. Neither one of those two statements got printed out, which is your number is large and your number is divisible by five. 